Happy New Year, Des Moines. Here we are at our first edition of City Spotlight. I'm Mayor Frank County, and today we're going to the Glaza studio to talk with Rachel Glaza about all the programs that are going on over there and talk to Jamie Seitz about a Zumba program that she has in dance. And then we're gonna go over to West End Architectural and talk to Don Short about how to reuse, repurpose, and recycle. We're gonna have a good time this month. Stick with us, we'll be right back. We have it all. All right, welcome back. I'm at Glaza Studios, uh, coincidentally with Rachel Glaza. Rachel, welcome to City Spotlight. Thank you. Let's talk a little bit about uh, what, what we're doing over here at the studio and uh, how long have you been here, first of all? Well, we, uh, I've been here since about last March, but we had our opening party April 30th of 2011. And we've been doing dance and fitness classes and events ever since then. Talk to us a little bit about the concept behind why you opened the studio and then tell us a little bit about the, the events and the classes that, that you have up here. Well, I've always, Love dancing. Uh, I've when I moved to Des Moines, I, I got really involved in the salsa scene, and I just thought it was great. And I, I danced with Gateway Dance Theater, and uh, there in Des Moines, it was hard for me to find any adult dance classes. And so eventually, I found this space, and I thought it'd be perfect to offer adult dance and fitness classes. And we also have events. Uh, there's many different types. And January 14th, we are having a salsa dance event, and where you basically dance salsa all night. But uh, so you bring in a live band. And we're not having a live band. Okay. We will just. It'll just. We'll have a DJ. Okay. But we at other parties or other events, we have had live bands. But usually, uh, some of the events that we have had have had a live performance aspect to it, or performance art aspect to it. Sure. Yeah. And so, talk to us a little bit about classes. So now we, you know, we're doing kind of events, and we want adults, and why just adults, by the way? Um, I think the adult dance, uh, there's not many adult dance classes offered in Des Moines. It's an underserved community. I, there's many children studios, and so I feel, that there needs to be more options for adults. You know, I was a member at the, at the YMCA for a little while, and the, 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 what they offer is wonderful, but there wasn't really any nice studio space where you could come and really be artistic and, and express yourself in, in a, I don't want to say a safe environment, but in a nice calming environment like sure. we have here. You know. So when you do your events up here, yeah. You have a rather large space. Yes. So how many folks and how do you reach out to let people know that you're, you're doing an event and when and where? How do, how do people get in touch with Glaze's Studio and, and find out what you're doing and when you're doing it and all that? Well, we have a, a website, www.glazestudio.com, and then we also have a Facebook page. Uh, as of right now, a lot of it's been word of mouth and social media. So that is typically how people find out or from our, our website. Um, I have, I've had a lot of luck with just word of mouth. And, and people, it, it feel, it, there has been some, some PR efforts, depending on you know, what event it's been, but uh, yeah, just coming to the Facebook page or the website, and you'll you'll find okay. out what's is going there, on. Is there a phone number anybody could call? And kind um, of yeah, the phone number that I put on the website is is five one five seven two zero nine eight four, and that'll go directly to me. So I answer any questions about the space. We rent out the space for weddings and 
and different things like that. I actually officiate weddings, and I've officiated a few weddings. So. You do that up here as well? Yeah, I do. All right. <laughs> you do some dancing yourself. Yes. Uh, what type of dancing do you do? And then also, do you do those classings up here as well? Well, I, I, I love all types of dancing. I, pretty much any type I, I, I really enjoy. Um, I, I really like belly dancing, and I, I belly dance with a band, and a few bands actually. And uh, at this time, I'm not offering belly dance classes, but I am considering doing some workshops because a lot of people have been interested in them. Is, is time, what are, what are the hours usually of operation or is it sort of by appointment or by class? How does somebody just stop in? What are, what are generally, how do you operate, what are the hours? Here? Well, we have, a, we have a calendar on the website and then how you register is you email the instructor and okay. their email address is on the website. It's, it's a calendar. We have early morning classes. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, which is like a get lean sort of class where you come in and, and do really high aerobic, high energy aerobic class. And then during the lunch hour, we offer yoga on Monday and Wednesdays. That's 12.15 to 1. And then we have a lot of after work classes. There's modern, there's hip hop, there's Zumba, um, a little black dress workout, ballet, which is hugely popular, salsa. Um, adult tap and a cardio dance and a cardio strip fit that's kind of fun and, and sexy. So in, in terms of, of all the different offerings that you have here is what's, what's the focus really? Is it, is it health and fitness and that sort of thing or is it just interest in dance and hey here's an opportunity for adults to get involved in, uh, in, in dance and an opportunity that's otherwise maybe not readily available? I mean, how, how, how are you? I think it's a little bit of everything. I mean, when you start dancing, people are, some people say, oh, I can't dance. I, you know, I'm too this to dance, or I'm too fat, or I'm too something. They make up some excuse. But the thing is, when you start dancing, the health and the fitness just come right along. I really, I want the focus to be, or I think the focus should be for the appreciation of the different stylizations of dancing. And virtually every dance has some sort of story behind it or some cultural significance behind it. And it's a celebration of life. I mean, people are made to move. We're all made to move. And babies love to dance. Babies are the best audience when I belly dance. They are so, they, they are so captivated and they, they think I'm some magical being or something. It's really cute. And they, they don't want to stop watching me. Their parents will be like, come on. And they're like, no, I don't want to go. It's, and it's just, you know, seeing that sort of like magic and inspiration in their eyes is, is I think that's something we lose when we get older and I'm not sure why. So I'm trying to bring some of that back and the joy in movement. I really want this to be the focus of the joy in movement. And like the Zumba classes, those are extremely fun. Everyone has a great time. One of the, uh, the instructors that you have for your programs is Jamie Seitz. Yes. Uh, let's bring her on and talk about sort of what she's doing because I know that she's pretty focused on uh, keeping people in shape. Yes, very good. All right. The secret to a good dog is a tired dog, and that's why dog parks are so important. They encourage people and their pets to exercise and socialize together. I've had dogs all my life, and this is Marley, and this is Moses. She needs a job to do to be happy, so that's why we play frisbee, we do agility, and we come to the dog park. My name is Jackie, and I geek dog parks. Now here we are with Jamie Seitz. Jamie, here we are at Glazes Studios and you do a class called Zumba. Yep. Let's talk a little bit about what is Zumba. Um, Zumba is a Latin based dance class. Um, so all of the music um, is world music, mostly Latin, but some African, some 
um, Indian belly dance music, some um, pretty much anything you can think of. Um, we throw in a lot of hip hop in there too, but usually every class is at least 70% um, Latin bass or world music. Um, and it was created by a man, Beto Perez, about, I think, 15 years ago or so in Florida. Um, and it's, it started just, he was a fitness instructor at a gym and he left all of his music, um, fitness music at home. And so he just plugged in what he had on cassette tapes and taught a dance class. And his, um, the ladies in his class loved it and they asked for it again. And that's how Zumba was born. So, But the idea is not just to teach dance, right? I mean, it's sort of a fitness uh, class as it well, is. right? Um, it's just a way to listen to the music instead of like in a typical um, fitness class, you would you know break it down by eight counts and, and teach the same types of things over and over. Zumba, you just take some of the moves that are original to um, you know Latin America or Africa, you take those moves and you put them to music and so it's really meant to just be fun and um, the whole premise is, is that no two people are gonna Zumba the same. So it's how your body moves and it's how, um, whatever your fitness level is and it, it can be whatever you want it to be. So it's just meant to be a fun way to move around and dance. Um, there is an instructor in there to give you some ideas, but if you come to a Zumba class, you'll find people doing all kinds of stuff in the class. Um, so it's, it's really just kind of a fun way and a good way to listen to other types of music. What, what would our viewers expect if they came to the class? Would they, uh, how long do the classes last? How intense is the is the workout? I mean, give us an idea of, of what that um, looks like. Here at Glaza, um, the class is 45 minutes long, <coughs> um, and we run in six-week sessions. Um, the nice thing about Zumba here is that we stick with the same list of about 11 songs. Um, and so when you come week one, you know, you come in, you learn all these new moves and new dances, and it's a little overwhelming. But by week three, you've seen them. You've, you've kind of tried them out, and so you can make it... Um, really big and really fun and so it's or I really can choose which ones I can do and, <laughs> yeah. and leave yes. the others out. Yes, and the nice out. thing is, is if you hate one song it's done in like three and a half minutes and yeah. so then you move on to something totally different so um, it can be as intense as you want a lot of people come and they are completely drenched from head to toe because it's just 45 minutes of just constant moving um, other people though if they want to come in and take it easy that's fine too it really is it's how your body works and I, you know we stress it through every class if you have knee issues or if you have problems with your hips or arthritis then you you take out what doesn't feel good to you and um, so there's modifications for every class and uh, so it can really be for for anyone so it's sort of like fitness taking our mind off really doing the work right it is 45 <laughs> minutes goes by really quickly in a Zumba class um, and so I think that's one of the things I love about it. Um, I have taught a lot of different Zumba, or a lot of different fitness classes over the years, and this one goes by really quickly. And, and you know, you are smiling and laughing, and some of the moves are kind of ridiculous and fun. And if you know, so it does. It goes by really quick, and it's it's something like that I've never done before. So. What's the difference between salsa and merengue? Um, it, just the location from where they're from, and just different dance moves. Salsa has you know front and back salsa and. Um, different maraca moves and merengue has a, a whole set of different movements. So um, similar music, but um, you know, just different moves. So okay. um, yeah, this one is a little bit of it's a reggaeton. It's a, a Latin hip hop song, and so um, does anyone want to join me? <laughs> All right. Well, let's watch first, and then maybe we'll see if anybody wants to jump in. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Jamie, show us, we're going to even get you a student here now. We've got Rachel who's going to step right up here. So um, talk to us about what, what, what are we going to see this time? Um, we're going to do uh, an African number. So it's some African Arabic tribal music and just some really easy fun moves to do um, this is a class favorite we get to use the whole space we'll just show you part of it today but um, this one is a really fun one that we usually end with so and okay. it's one we're currently doing at glazer right now all right let's get going okay oh, she got it. Oh, she got it. 
Welcome back from our city calendar. Hope you found something that you and your family can enjoy in and around the city of Des Moines during the month of January. But right now, we're at West End Architectural with Don Short, and we're gonna talk about uh, some of the things that you do to reuse, repurpose, recycle materials. Talk, tell us what, what's, what's... What do we do? Yeah. What's well, Mayor, I'd like to thank you for coming down here. I also wanna give you a little prop on the city of Des Moines. There are so many really cool things happening, the sculpture park, and it's a lot of behind the scene things that make that happen. And I think the council and yourself don't get quite as much credit from time to time from people like us who use a city, hear the customers coming in who talk about how attractive it is, how nice it is downtown. So you guys do need to pat yourselves on the back for what we have. Des Moines is a cool, cool place. Well, I appreciate your saying that, and uh, we'll uh, relay that message on to the rest of the council. But uh, well, I'm sure they'll watch. Yeah, yeah, they'll, yeah, they'll be watching. Absolutely, they're on this. Yeah. They're on this. Well, to answer your questions on what we do at West End, we started out six years ago as a two weekend tag sale. Put it in the Des Moines Register. We had so many people come in during those two weekends that I just kept staying open. So we went from six years ago with two people. Now I have a full time staff of 14 people. We're open seven days a week. We have a 50,000 square foot warehouse full of building materials, antiques, um, stained glass windows, lighting. And then what we've started doing in the last four years is producing furniture, custom furniture, made out of recycled pieces. So right now, we basically do everything. We buy and sell old things. We make new things out of old things. And it's absolutely overwhelming. In terms of, of uh, your employment, because I'm interested, you, you went from two employees, yourself and another one person, other, yep. and now you've got 14, a lot of those committed to doing tables like where we're sitting right now? Yes, we have three people that build full time. Okay. Then I have two or three people that merchandise, keep the store looking good. We have two people who finish products full time, and then we run a coffee shop and do events out of our space. So we have a staff that does the party part of it. We do 15 events a month within our building. So everybody does get to do a little bit of everything, but we have people that are pretty task driven. How far do you have to, re you've got a lot of product, you're uh, repurposing, reusing, but some of it, and as I look around, lots of different things uh, around the store. Do you find it's, it's uh, getting harder or easier to find product? I think the real quality museum type pieces are becoming harder to find and it's twofold. One is a good thing that people aren't tearing buildings down that have a lot of character. So those elements aren't as available here, which is good. Um, it's not as hard to find reclaimed product. Like we do a lot of barn tables where we make the material out of barn wood. Those barns, rather than being burned up or dumped, are now being torn down and saved. So in that vein, we, we have a pretty good source for material. People are becoming more aware of it, so instead of throwing something away, I probably get 20 calls a week, would you like this piece? 
Mm -hmm. um, the copper gutter off the Stewart Church, when that church was demoed and rebuilt after the fire, sure. we got all that copper material and made tables out of it. And right. so people are more cognizant of the use of a piece that could be thrown in the dump. How far do you have to, to reach sometimes to find, you get 20 calls a week, what, are they all from Iowa, are they all from central Iowa, or is it other states, or you, where do you get your product? It's actually all of the above. I would say probably 80% of our material comes within a 100 mile radius. We work with salvage companies out of New York City, Chicago, Kansas City, Minneapolis, where they might have something that we want to use, and they might want to buy product from us. Um, I get riddling racks out of France that we make wine tables out of. Um, so it's kind of all over the board, but the majority of it is probably a 100 mile radius. Um, our end product, we sell to companies in Minneapolis wholesale, we sell to companies in LA, we sell to companies in New York City that buy our end products like this copper table. So we're, getting, we're trying to get more going out than coming in. Um, talk to me just for a minute, because a lot of the, the work that we do on this show is all about the environment. Yes. And so, um, as you go into a lot of these, these old buildings, old houses, old whatever, churches, commercial structures, do you feel like you're making a significant dent in the um, lessening of, of stuff going into the landfill, for instance? Or I'd like to say that we are, but if you take the tonnage of a building, and what we actually are able to reuse, it's a very small dent. We end up taking more of the, I'll say the earrings off a of sow, mm -hmm. because it's the real pretty pieces, as opposed to being able to reclaim the two by fours or the plaster or the asphalt shingles. That's above my realm. But I think the time- Or at least outside of it. Outside of it and above it, because I can't do all that, you know? It's, yeah. But I think we're trying to get people on a mindset that most people will never be able to fully go green on a house with solar and geothermal. But if they can use all reclaimed doors, all reclaimed flooring, that type of reusable part, it makes a difference. It's interesting uh, uh, around the state, and I think we'd like to at least uh, take a walk around and take a look and see some of the mm -hmm. things that you have and how you're doing some of this but we've uh, talked to some people that are living off the grid and, and doing some different things, uh, you know, where they're using a lot of available energy sources, whether it's wind or whether it's solar or geothermal, and they have battery arrays as backups and all kinds of uh, interesting things, and all the uh, application of that, plus super insulated houses, right. I mean, where they're getting R60 walls and R90 roofs and, and, and stuff, it's so interesting to watch how people are, are trying to actually do that, do that footprint that's zero. Correct. And uh, uh, some are actually achieving it. And uh, it's, it's a bit of a stretch for us living in, in an urban environment to try to figure out how we get from here to there, because some of the things probably don't meet code exactly. Right. But um, I think that we have to, to look at, at those opportunities in the future on how we do it and certainly um, your efforts uh, in saving and preserving, not only uh, for the environment, but more importantly, maybe, uh, part of the fabric that, that is and was our community and other communities around, rather than burning it up, crunching it up, throwing it in the landfill, or maybe just for the metal purpose, uh, somebody recycling or selling that. So, uh, and there are, there's different levels. We're, fit it, we're filling a niche, but we can't be all of it. So someone else has to come up with the uh, green wall side and taking the old plaster and maybe turning that into concrete, for instance. And so other people have to do different kind of combinations of what we're doing now to what it could be. Mm -hmm. And we're comfortable with where we're at and we like to think we're contributing. And I, and I think you are in a big, big way. And, and I, uh, but I think it's, it's out of seeing what you do often uh, might cause somebody else to say, hey, I could take this other piece of this and do something else with it. And, you know, we kind of go through uh, peaks and valleys in terms of people's interest in, in lots of these efforts, whether it's energy or whatever. And at the moment, it uh, seems like we've been refocused on, on the economy and jobs and those kinds of things. But you're actually, you know, creating jobs. Correct. Doing the right thing with recycled material. So uh, you. if you don't mind, maybe we could kind of take a walk around and, and see some show. of the stuff that you have. We'd be happy to show you so, some of the real practical pieces that we're doing. 
that everyday people can incorporate. Right. Now I notice that this table that we're sitting at here yes. is, uh, would you call this a dining room table kind of a thing? It is, or? and we do these custom sizes. So uh -huh. countertops, we do dining room tables, we do bathroom vanities. This particular table is old two-handled copper boilers that they used to can food in. They're fun sitting by a fireplace with a couple of logs in them, but we see a better look by putting them onto the tables. We also make tabletops out of reclaimed barn lumber. Uh, we make light fixtures out of the corn picker tips off a combine that's going to hit the landfill. Wow. We have those going to LA pretty often because out there they've never seen a corn picker tip. And when it's on a wall like this, it looks really cool. Well, <clears throat> and especially if you have no idea what it is. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, and, and do you feel like, a, what, what part of the niche do you think you fit in in terms of, of you know, this repurpose stuff? It, it, because you know, some of the pricing is not exactly inexpensive. Correct. Uh, I guess what I would look at is what we're doing is more decorative and functional. And okay. so we do a lot of art, like we make the tin panels on a wall that'll hang. Um, that's discretionary. A dining room table is something that you need. You can buy it from some places that it might be imported out of pressed plywood, or you can buy a custom table here that you might have for 100 years. Right. And I'm not saying 100 years, because we could, could. And it could be like the antiques that we have upstairs right now that were our grandparents that were, per, were made 100 years ago. That's kind of what we're trying to do, is make a real quality piece out of something that was already made. Right, and, it's, and sometimes it's that effort in, in a quality piece in a, a well-made piece that will last that period of time. It's sort of like I plant a tree. Yes. You know, they won't see the benefit of it usually during their lifetime, but certainly their kids and their grandkids and their great-grandkids yes. can and will. Yep, exactly. So let's take a look around. All right, sounds good. Right. Appreciate you guys being here. You bet. Well, back in this area, we have a lot of our product that is sold and waiting to be finished or go out the door to a customer. This particular uh, barn table, we've made the top out of reclaimed barn lumber. Uh, it's a martini top table, it can seat eight. This one is sold, getting delivered next week. Then behind it, we have an antique pyramid out of an arts and crafts home. And so the mixture of having the old and new is kind of what we do here. I don't know if you can see in the back, there's a Coke sign. People might reuse the Coke sign for decor in a loft or a restaurant or a bar. Um, so we just kind of look for a little bit of everything. And then over here to my right, uh, I don't know if the camera will show it, but we have a copper top table that we've made out of the copper boilers. We have a tin top table that we've made out of reclaimed tin ceiling. Uh, the piece that I'm standing in front of is actually a timber out of an old building that's four inches by 14 inches, and it'll be a top on this metal console table. And the console table is made out of an old wrought iron fence railing. And mixing the metal and the wood together just kind of gives a, an interesting look. Uh, some of the smaller de decorative pieces we have on the back bar, uh, limestone balustrades off the original Court Avenue Bridge here in Des Moines. And when the water level got low, they knocked the bridge. Um, pieces that they'd knocked off the bridge, some guys went in and pulled them out of the water. So we've got some of those. A uh, piece off of a corn crib, old gauges. We take anything that's got a little bit of character and turn it into decor. Or we'll take something that has a lot of character and repurpose it into a more functional piece that we can use today. And so we kind of look for the, the potential of everything. So a lot of what we do ends up being a reuse. This is tin ceiling out of an old building. And we reuse these as basically decor, pieces that can hang on the wall. Um, and as I said before, we do a lot of furniture building, custom furniture made out of reclaimed pieces. So this particular island, we've used old porch columns for the legs, barn lumber for the top and the shelf. We build these islands any size. They can have doors, drawers, cabinets, whatever people want to do with them. Uh, we also have in front of me a sofa table. <clears throat> the material of the sofa table is the flooring out of a semi-trailer. And so we've cut all the bolts off, put the pieces together, and reused the wood that goes down the highway in the semi-trailer. Put it on a bent steel base and you've got a nice coffee table. We also do a lot of interesting lighting out of reclaimed materials. We use antique fixtures but also come up with unique and different ways to use 
parts into interesting lighting. Well, that's it for this edition of City Spotlight. Hope you enjoyed not only the dance and the exercise, but also how we reclaim, reuse, and repurpose old stuff. When thinking about reusing, repurposing, and recycling, contact the City of Des Moines Public Works to request a blue cart recycle bin at 515-283-4950. And remember, we do pick up Christmas trees as yard waste or contact Metro Waste Authority for a location nearest you at 515-244-0021. Until next time, I'm Mayor Frank County, and this is City Spotlight.